Hey my friends, welcome to The Automation Show. My name is Sean Tierney from The Automation School. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the RTA, or Real-Time Automations, replacement for the 1761 Net ENI, or the DF1 to Ethernet uh, gateway. But before we get started, I want to cover some uh, things first. Um, next week is a holiday here in the United States, so we will not have a live show next week. Um, but we will have one in two weeks. And if you're a vendor and you want us to feature one of your products on the show, we'd absolutely love to do that. And um, you know, you can just contact me by using the contact link over at theautomationblog.com. That said, we also have um, the ANC 100 that we're giving away. It's still in the box. And all you have to do to enter that drawing is to be one of the first 25 people to reply, reply to the post over at theautomationforums.com. Several people have already replied, and they're in the drawings, and I'd love to uh, give the unit away on the show um, in two weeks. So if you have any use for an Ethernet, the Data Highway Plus gateway, um, please head over to the Automation Forums. Just make a post on that, uh, on that uh, Automation Show Episode 2 topic, and uh, you'll be entered to win totally free. Uh, an ANC uh, Ethernet to Data Highway Plus um, uh, gateway. And uh, all the items that are donated to the show as samples to be used on the show, we're going to have them all mounted up here behind me, you know, as kind of a wall of fame and appreciation for those companies that, you know, let us use their products. And um, with that said, um, I've had several vendors contact me with uh, quotes. We don't manufacture anything here. I mean, we have a tech blog, theautomationblog.com, in the live shoot and show here, the automation show, and uh, you know, kind of like an end gadget or a uh, tech crunch or a PC mag, we don't manufacture anything. So please do not send me a quote for hardware to feature on um, on the blog or on the show because uh, you know we'll we'll welcome your samples, but we we don't manufacture anything, so we don't need to buy your PLCs or HMIs or anything like that. Um, with that said. Uh, we also always looking for people to be on the automation podcast. So if you want to demo your products, maybe it's a software product, maybe it's a hardware product, we can do a live show where you do the demo for me and the audience. So always welcome to doing that on the automation podcast. We've done that before with um, the guys at SkyCAD. We did it before with uh, the gentleman who had an app that lets you read and write to your control logics from um, your iPhone or iPad. So I'd love to do more of those too. In any case, um, just also want to point out that uh, if you'd like to sponsor the show, we're open to that. Just get contact me, and we could insert a small 30-second uh, ad here into the show, um, and you'd be helping us make more shows, which we would love, would love to do. Um, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and dig in here now. Um, the first thing um, I had to do was I needed to uh, copy these files. My PC is actually outside of the studios because it's kind of noisy with all the fans and everything. So I've already copied the, uh, these files, everything that was on the desk, to my hard drive. Um, I'm not going to be using this uh, small Ethernet cable that comes with the unit because uh, it's, it's, it won't reach my, my uh, switch back here. Um, also, not going to use the. Uh, I'm glad they include it. But we're not going to use reuse the uh, the the power cable here because we have the power cable we used last week, so um, we'll be using that again. Um, and then with that said, let's take a look at the unit itself here. Um, this is how it comes. And uh, when we were trying to do the live stream earlier, one of the things you have to do is remove this note to find the Ethernet port. And uh, here you can see. It says it's set up for DHCP, and that's kind of where I went wrong in the live stream because my uh, server is automatically handing out addresses um, for all the devices that are DHCP. So uh, we'll get around that uh, before the next show with another Ethernet card. So in any case, that's where your uh, the Ethernet port is, and um, that looks like a micro SD card slot and a power slot or a power uh, jack. They don't have a power supply here, but that's okay. And of course, that's the power indicator. We have uh, two port LEDs there for port one and port two. And um, then you can see the custom model number right there, the 515RTA EA. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me try it again. The 515RTA ENI. Okay. Then on the bottom here, we have where we bring in our 24 volt DC power. I think it's actually 8 to 28 volts uh, DC. And the serial port. And this is where you use your standard 
um, PMO2 cable to go to micros. You don't want to use a PMO2 cable with a 504. That's a data hardware plus cable. It's not a micro cable. So, uh, yeah, you could cause damage to the device if you did that with a 504. So don't. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, with that said, you can see it's DIN rail mountable. And I like the package. It's, it's small. It's uh, pretty easy to uh, make space for. And you can see here, that is the MAC address right there. So you can see the last four characters are 611D. And so that is uh, what we'll use when we assign it an address. So what are we going to do first? First thing I want to do is I want to give it 24 volts. And um, we are unplugged here. I like to always make sure, you know, safety first. Make sure power is off. And let's go ahead and take the terminal block out. And you can see the terminal block, right, very easily uh, labeled there. You know, I like it when they label the terminal blocks. It just makes things easy. So put plus 24 volts right there. And I'm bringing the negative here to the ground. Okay. There we go. Okay. And we'll stick that in there. Then I um, let me show you what I'm doing over on the computer here. Um, here you can see right now I'm connected to the uh, 1000 via a USBS, um, which, is, uh, which is right here. You can see it right here. Okay, so I'm going to go offline and then disconnect that. So let's go ahead and do that offline. Okay. And I will disconnect because I want to plug that, the PMO2, 1761 CBL PMO2, in the port one of the 515 RTA ENI. Let me just tighten up one side there. Okay. So that's part one. The next part is I need to plug it into the network. Okay, so I've disconnected the server. That's why we're not live streaming. And I've plugged it into the network. And this way, when I power this guy on, I'll be able to give it an address in the free utility that comes with RS Links, the Boopy DHCP tool. Excellent. All right, so we get that up. Okay, and then in mere moments, we should see that 611D pop up. And let's go ahead and give it an address. I'm going to give it an address of 192.168.1.155. And OK, there it is. And now, go ahead and close that. If I open up uh, a web browser here, I should be able to connect to it. Let's see, 192.168.1.155. And here we are. So that was fairly easy. So if we go to uh, network here, we can see the settings, okay? And uh, you know, I'm gonna take this off of DHCP. Let's make it static, okay? That all looks good, we'll leave it like that. Yes. Okay, we're already there, so let's try it again. Excellent. And then here, this is all set up. We found this out. This is all. This is the default of the uh, micro. So it's uh, by default 19.2 DF1, CRC, and all that. Now at this point, we're going to stop and load the EDS file because RS Links doesn't know what this device is. It's not an Allen Bradley device. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here. EDS registration tool. Where are you? There you are. And let me go ahead and go offline here. I don't, you know, we're going to try doing it with links running and everything. I know in the past you used to have to shut everything down, but I don't know if that's still the case or not. We'll see. Let's go ahead and add. We'll register a directory. We'll browse. It's on the desktop. RTA, EDS files. We'll look in subfolders too, hey, in case they're there. Okay, looks like that's it. Put a boom, put a bing, put a boom. All right. All right, now with the EDS device file loaded, let's see if we can find it under the Ethernet IP driver. But one thing you'll notice here is it doesn't show up as a micro. And that's because you do not want to use the Ethernet IP 
um, driver. You want to use the Ethernet devices driver. And this is in the manual. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. But let's go here. The devices, add new. Boom. And then we'll just put in the address of 168.1.155. Boom. Close. Okay. And there it is. There's our micro. So let's try to go back online with it. So, com, system comms. Okay, come over here. There it is. Let's see if it works. Sweet, it did. Now, how did I know that? Well, if we go into, let me uh, minimize all these things. If we go into the uh, DVD, this is the, uh, the disk that came with it. I copied it to the hard drive here. We go to documents and we go to the user's guide. It's not the use case, but the user's guide first. Okay, this is where we found uh, the wiring or let's search on it. So here's wiring, pronounce the wiring, page 10. And this is what goes into, hey, come on, work with me now. Go to page 10. Hmm, no links, huh? We'll put page 10 in here. Okay. And here you can see we can only use one physical port at a time, either the DB9 or the terminal block. And this is where the uh, serial connection goes. Okay. And here's the note about not using the 1761 CBL PMO2 with the 504. 504 does not have a mini DIN serial port, it's a data highway plus port. Okay. And um, so with that said, um, the next thing we want to do here is let's go look at the use case guide. And I simply went in this guide and I searched for links. And this is where it tells you to use the Ethernet devices driver in links. All right. So with that, we've tested out going online with it. You know, as long as you follow those simple rules of installing the EDS file, and then using the Ethernet devices driver, everything works right out of the box. It's fairly easy. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post them over at theautomationforums.com on the post for this um, episode. And if you're interested in having your product showcased on the Automation Show, contact me by going to theautomationblog.com and click on the contact link that comes directly to me. Um, don't forget, if you want to win one of these uh, ANC gateways, Ethernet to Data Hybrid Plus, um, post on episode two of the Automation Show's uh, forum post over at the Automation Forums. And um, if you're looking for a great sale, you'll notice the background image on the automationblog.com. There's a coupon there where you can get my training courses at an additional 10% off. So if you're looking for the mega bundle, um, you can get it for like over 40% off, all my courses for under $500. Um, and if you already own a course or two and you just want to pick up the others, just send me a message. I actually got three this morning from three different people saying, hey, I already own some of the courses in the Mega Bundle. Can I just pick up the rest? And I'll make you up a special uh, coupon just for you so you can actually uh, uh, get the rest of the courses at that same uh, great discount. Um, and with that, that's it for this episode of the Automation Show. Until next time, peace.